Welcome back to our final installment of the convention card walkthrough. We're going to look at the box that says defense versus no trump now. And all this really means is what do our overcalls mean after the opponent's open one no trump? And in these situations, the simplest way to do this is just to make everything natural. Meaning, if they open one no trump and we bid two clubs, it just shows a good club suit and an overcall range. A good 10, usually maybe a little bit better when we're overcalling over one no trump. But with our really strong hands, we're just always going to double. And a double in this situation is just usually going to mean you have at least as good a hand as they do or better. So something like 16 or more points, we're going to double. And this is actually penalty in nature. It just says, I want to defend. And the only time partner should be bidding in response to this double would be if they have a really terrible hand and they don't think they can defend one no trump. But that's the only thing that's going to be a, a little bit different than it would normally be if you just agree to play these as all natural bids. There's another simple version of a defense versus their no trump where you get to show both majors and this is what's called Landy. So Landy just says that two clubs shows five, five in the majors. So it shows five hearts and five spades. And then all the rest of these bids are natural. Diamond shows diamonds, heart shows hearts, Spade shows spades. This is a really simple version of a defense against no trump, and it gives you that little edge of being able to show both major suits if you have them. And this is called Landy. I can put about 10 different conventions here that you can play. Things called Capaletti, Modified Capaletti, Don't, Mechwell. It's just almost never-ending number of ways you can play this, but this is the simplest agreement you could have that's not totally standard. Okay, the only thing you would have to remember is just make sure you alert two clubs. And more importantly, make sure you remember that that shows 5-5 five, five in the majors. Uh, if you're passing this bid, you're going to be in a world of hurt usually. But to simplify it, if you just do this, you're going to be playing all of the bids as natural. So you can choose what to play here, but keeping it simple at the beginning is really advisable, especially if you're you know, relatively new to any sort of convention. right? You don't want to have too much on the card that's going to confuse you in these situations. Now let's work down to the bottom of the card. And we're going to start with opening preempts. We're going to check light and we're going to check sound. And, and the way we're going to do this is we're going to be sound, meaning we, we want to have a good suit and a relatively good preempt when we're vulnerable. And when we're non-vulnerable, we're going to be relatively light. And this just is good preempting strategy. When you're vulnerable, you're at a little bit higher of a risk. So you want to be sound in this situation. You want to have a good suit and reasonably good shape to make your preemptive bid. However, when you're non-vulnerable, you can be a little bit more aggressive and have a wider range of hands. So light makes a lot of sense there because you want to preempt more often when you have less risk against the bid that you're about to make. Now we're going to jump over right to the right where it says over opponents take out double. And the only thing we're going to do here is we're, we're just going to write down here that redouble, which is two X's, equals any hand that's 10 or more points. And all this means is whenever our partner opens the bidding and the opponent doubles to our right, Every bid we make, whether it's a suit bid or no trump, is going to be less than 10 points. And redouble is the only bid that shows 10 or more points. And this is going to allow us a lot of flexibility to preempt when we need to, and also the ability to show when we have a good hand by this one bid. And if any of you have taken a class with me where we talk about doubles, we can legitimately take out most of the bids from the box and show that they're very weak after the opponent doubles. But when we redouble, we're showing this only possibility of a good hand. Again, we have other conventions we can play here, and we can talk about those later. But this is the simplest and best agreement to have. Redouble says, I just have a good hand, and it allows us the possibility to play defense against their doubled contract, or be able to find a, any sort of game or part score that we need to. And right below that, we're going to see versus opponents preempts. What is a double? And the best agreement to have in this box here is that when they preempt, we play takeout doubles up to and including four hearts. So that means that any preemptive bid, four hearts or below, 
our double is takeout, meaning we have the other three suits and obviously varying degrees of strength. If we're doubling a four level bid, we're probably going to have a better hand than if we're doubling a two heart opening bid. But this works for all of these situations where we want partner to bid. So when they make a preemptive bid of four hearts or below, our double should be takeout. If they make a preemptive bid of four spades, you can use four no trump as the takeout bid there. And the double will be more penalty in nature above that level. Right to the left, we see the direct Q bid, and this is the sister bid to the unusual no trump. This is the Michaels Q bid. And all this says is when they open one of a suit, if we bid that suit at the two level, we're showing some sort of two suited hand. When they open a minor suit and we bid that, for example, they open one diamond and we bid two diamonds, we're showing two five card major suits, spades and hearts. When they open a major and we bid that, for example, one spade, two spades, we're showing the other major suit, which is hearts, and one of the minor suits. Again, five, five in those suits. When we use the Michaels qubit and the unusual no trump together, we can show a lot of our two suited hands right away with one bid. So it's really advantageous to play them both. Our slam conventions are going to be next. And we're going to talk about 1430 key card and Gerber, would, which would only be used over no trump auctions specifically. But if you want to learn about 1430 key card, there's a nice lesson right online and it includes a lot of our major suit slam going auctions as well because this is a convention that really gives you the most information not just about the best cards in the hand but about the trump suit quality so it's really useful for slam going hands and below this is the best kept secret on the convention card we can see the lead section and we see all the standard leads versus both suits and no trump so we can see all these cards yeah, for example, when we look over here versus suits, when we have king, queen, small, that's what those little X's are. They're just small cards. We're going to lead the king because that's the one that's in bold. And these are all the standard agreements. So if you wanted just a quick little look at the best leads to make when you're holding these cards, they're right there on the card for you. Now, again, you can't look at this when you're defending a hand, but it's nice to go over it when you have some spare time and just take a look at the leads that you're supposed to make with these card holdings. The only thing we're going to check down here is that we play standard carding versus suits and versus no trump. You can choose to play a bunch of different things here, such as Laventhal discards, odd even discards, trump suit preference, Smith Echo, reverse Smith Echo. There's tons of different ways you can card, but it's best to start standard, get that right, and then you can start doing anything else you want. You're going to need to practice signals no matter what you agree to play, and the easiest and most logical ones to understand are the standard cards. And whenever you're sitting at the duplicate table and someone asks you about your carding, you can just say, we play standard. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos on the convention card. It's a nice way to refresh you and your partner's memory about what you decide to play in these situations. And it's great just to jog your memory before a bridge game. Don't forget to always fill this out with someone the first time you play, right? It's very important to know what you're going to do in these situations and what to expect from partner. So I hope you got a lot out of this. And until next time, this is Rob Barrington signing off from LearnBridge.nyc. Take care.